Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative is speaking to Eliza De Oliveira and Aaron Ashmore about season two of Lock on Lock and Key dropping on Netflix. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, PD. It's you exciting, good you know, season <laughs> season one ends on quite a bang. So I feel like everyone's excited for season two. Aaron, specifically with your character, a lot's going to happen in season, a lot happened in season one, a lot's going to happen in season two. How do you process and prepare for everything when you're going into a role like this? Uh, well, you know, I mean, in, I, I sort of start so much from like what what's on the page and, and what you're given. And luckily, I think the, the writing on Lock and Key is great. So you yeah. start there, you play that. And yeah, it's all on the page for me. Like, that's really what I do. And uh, you know, obviously, Duncan's big stuff is uh, what he's dealing with is his memory loss and, yeah. and inability to sort of process fully who he is. And I think that that's kind of interesting to play. I think there's lots of interesting stuff around um, trauma and childhood and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, I think it was a pretty meaty uh, stuff for me to to jump into, and they, you know, it's all it's always about what they give you to do, and I feel very lucky that, that I got a lot of good stuff to do this for week. sure. Now, Lizla, you play Dodge, and <laughs> there's a lot we can say about Dodge. Um, just it's craziness, I guess. I mean, what's it like playing? Yeah, what's it, what's it like playing a character like that? It's so much fun. It's so much fun to be able to be this unapologetic person. Um, you know, I mentioned this earlier as well, but a lot of the times when you see women on screen, they have, you know, this maternal instinct or they care for children as, you know, how a lot of us women are. So it's so great to, to be able um, to go on screen and, and not do that. <laughs> and Dodge is more like eat her young. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of, right? And she is an echo. So she, there is no, you know, she's mean because this happened in her childhood or this is like, no, she's just evil because she wants to be evil. She's evil and, and she drives me nuts. And you do, that's the point. So you do a great job. <laughs> anything she wants and she completely acts on impulse i think a lot of us you know fantasize about that so it's really great to be able to see that on screen and also to kind of be able to play different personalities because she's such a master manipulator oh for sure question for both of you starting with with aaron i mean one of the things that i love about this show lock and key and you're seeing this is a trend i feel like in a lot of storytelling and a lot of content is one can make an argument that Lock and Key is a genre-bending show. There's a lot happening in this show. There's a lot of elements. It scares you. Sometimes it makes you laugh. Sometimes it has, it has the adventure component. There's a lot of things happening. It's packed. And that's like difficult to do to be able to incorporate all the elements. Is that something you've noticed now do, working on it for, for two seasons? Like how this is like a genre-bending show. It's got the scary stuff. It's got the emotional stuff. It's got a lot going on, Aaron. Yeah, well, I think that that uh, over the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, genre stuff has become the most popular stuff. I mean, what are the biggest movies in the world? What are the biggest shows in the world? Like, it's all genre stuff, like yeah. Squid Game. Like, that, I would argue that that's a, you know, somewhat of a genre type of, sh you know, show. Uh, all the big Marvel movies, you know, all this stuff like that is what it is. Uh, and I think that originally a lot of genre stuff was... Um, not maybe not taken super seriously, but when you start to bring in the human elements to it, uh, I think it can make for great television. Like there's yep. characters in extraordinary circumstances. And if you play the drama and the, uh, then the reality of that, I think it makes for great TV. And I think that's why it has sort of taken over as, you know, the most popular sort of genre is, you know, these big genre shows. Nice, nice, nice Netflix plug there too. Squid Game, Lock and Key. Hey buddy, I'm, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not new. Laszlo, it's interesting though, because especially with your character, I mean, it's not really spoilers, but there's some moments with Dodge in season one that are like, wow. Like, like straight up horror like elements That's why in the script too i remember for season one when i read that i throw the kids the kid in the train tracks i was on a beach and i was like 
I do what? <laughs> okay, Aaron, that's exactly what I was thinking of. That's what I was asking that question. That's yeah. Uh, it's great. It's <laughs> funny. Uh, it, it's funny how you knew what I was referring to, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh, my friend's kid watched the show, and there's a video of him right before he watched the show, and he's like, "I can't wait to see you, Liza." And then immediately <laughs> after a video of him sobbing, this is a child, like he's little, and he was like, "You're so mean. Why would you do that?" And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I guess I did my job right." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say nailed it like, well that's the thing cry. too yeah i interviewed someone on my show recently and they play like a really bad character on a tv show like really bad like not even like you know how they say aaron some characters like misunderstood like no this is like a bad <laughs> person and they went to like a supermarket and the person saw them and was like oh man and they were like yeah they were like i don't like your character and he's like thanks like i guess i did a good job <laughs> a lot of people thinking i'm mean too and then <laughs> surprised when i'm not i get a lot of like oh you're nice no it, it, <laughs> it's a really nice surprise that must feel really nice like, yeah, yeah so aaron is it safe to say if you look at you know because both you and liza you're storytellers that's what you do is it safe to say one of your favorite things about storytelling is you get to play a bunch of different characters like not just one character like a lock and key you get to play a specific character what do you think about that? That's interesting as well. I think that you're right. I mean, I, I I enjoy acting, but I think the thing that I really like most is is being part of telling a story. Okay. Um, and yeah, getting to play different roles is always exciting, especially when you get to like the the perfect thing is doing a series where you get a character that you enjoy and you get to do it for a couple seasons and then you get to move on to something else, whatever. But yeah, it, it, it's it's just the best. Okay, um, and very cool. Been, before we wrap up, what are you hoping to get out of it? Uh, for season two of Lock and Key, Lysla. I'm actually really excited for people to see this whole different side of Dodge because mm -hmm. we end season one, the, the locks think that they have defeated Dodge, but the reality is that they haven't and Dodge is right under their noses. So it's very, in, it's it's a very interesting season. I also think it's, it's, it's a scarier season because everything's established already. So I think the audience is going to have a lot of fun. Amazing. Liza, Aaron, thank you both so much for your time. And I'm really excited for everyone to be able to watch season two of Lock and Key on Netflix. Thank you so much. Thank you, Petey. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.